They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Earlier this morning, we lit the candle of peace. And I must admit that when I first discovered that, the liturgical calendar gospel reading for this morning was the first eight verses of Mark. I was a bit surprised. After all, anybody who has taken a course on the Gospel of Mark knows that Mark says absolutely nothing about the birth of Christ. And yet, it was going to be the Gospel reading for this morning's uh, second Sunday in Lent. Furthermore, when I dug even a little bit deeper into the eight verses that the calendar has, I could not find a single verse that had the word peace in it. However, as I worked through this passage, I saw an indirect connection between the second candle of Advent that we lit this morning and this passage. Hopefully by the end of this morning's message, you will see a connection as well. After a subscript in verse 1 declaring that Mark's gospel is going to be the beginning of the gospel, or as you probably know already, in the Greek, the literal translation would be the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Mark starts off with a quote that is a combination of Malachi 3.1 and Isaiah 40, verse 3. Verse 2 of Mark 1 starts off with Malachi proclaiming that there will be a forerunner to the Messiah. This forerunner will prepare the way of the one the people of Israel were waiting for, the one who would restore David's royal throne. In the next verse, Mark brings in the Isaiah prophecy, focusing on verse 3 of Isaiah 40. Mark emphasizes that this forerunner would be warning us that we need to make straight our paths for the coming of the Lord. Mark continues his prologue by introducing John the Baptist as the forerunner to Christ. In Luke's Gospel, we have read about the amazing birth of John to an old priest named Zachariah and his barren wife Elizabeth. During the uh, angel's announcement to Zachariah, the priest was informed that his son was to be named John, and that this son would indeed be the forerunner to the coming of the Lord. Mark continues his introduction by informing us that John comes from either the wilderness or some translation, say the desert, and either word would be acceptable here, as in the Greek, uh, it refers to the same area. While we, as modern readers, might just overlook this, the significance of this forerunner coming from the desert, the importance of this would not have been lost on the original readers of Mark's Gospels. They would know that all of the prophets came from the wilderness or the desert. Also, the wilderness would invoke the image of the people of Israel and their long journey on the exodus from Egypt into the Promised Land. And it would also remind them how 
during that journey, God provided for them. Then jumping down to verse 6, Mark provides us with some information that once again, the original readers would recognize its importance. But I think many of us would overlook because of our lack of knowledge of the Old Testament. We are informed that John had a strange diet of locusts and honey and that he dressed himself in camel hair and a leather belt. What the original audience would be drawn to based on their knowledge of what's written in 1st and 2nd Kings is that John is following the same diet and the same dress as the prophet Elijah. Clearly, Mark is trying to portray John in the same light that the people would see the prophet Elijah. And there was a prophecy in Malachi talking about how Elijah would return. Those of you who might remember the story of Elijah, Elijah never had an earthly death. He was risen up to heaven while still alive. And there was thought that God would bring back the prophet Elijah when, as a forerunner to the Lord's return. Along with the message that John proclaimed of the need to prepare the way of the Lord, John also baptized the people who repented of their sins. The idea of a Jew undergoing baptism would be a very unusual thought. After all, the baptism John was performing was a ceremony that was very similar to a ceremony that a proselyte, a Gentile, who became a believer of the Jewish faith would undergo. However, as God's chosen people, the Jews would not see the need for the, they themselves to undergo such a baptism. However, even though this was not needed, they came to John to receive baptism. Perhaps what we are seeing in the Jews being baptized is a recognition that the birthright of the people of Israel was not sufficient to result in their salvation. Many denominations, including this one, declare that baptism is a one-time event. However, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gave us another sacrament, the sacrament of communion, which we will be partaking in a few minutes. In partaking of communion, we remember the need to confess our sins and rejoice in the truth that when we confess our sins, the blood of Christ spilled on the cross cleanses us and enables us to have a righteousness not based on our works, but based on our faith in Christ. In John's message, our need to prepare, in John's message of our need to prepare the way of the Lord, I think we see the connection to the peace candle. In Genesis 3, we read about the fall. That is when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Since that time, there has been a breach in our relationship with our Creator. That breach has prevented us from having a peaceful relationship with the Almighty. However, in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, 
God has now created a way for humanity to reestablish that right relationship with him. The pronouncement of the coming of the Messiah is the first step of God reaching out to sinful humans and restoring a peaceful relationship between the Almighty and us. John proclaimed the first coming of the Lord. However, we know that the first coming of the Lord only inaugurated the kingdom of God being established here on earth. We are currently living in a time that one scholar, a guy named Gordon Fee, calls the now and not yet. Christ has started the creation of the new heaven and earth. That's the now. But the not yet is that the completion of this creation will have to wait until Christ returns again. When he returns, he will not come as Savior, but as Judge. As I declared in my sermon two weeks ago, at the second coming, Christ will separate the people of all the nations into two groups. One group will be the sheep, the second group will be the goats. As we learned two weeks ago, the sheep will be invited to come and enjoy eternal life with Christ. The goats, on the other hand, will be sent to eternal damnation. While we are waiting for the second coming of Christ, we need to take up John's message to cry out, prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus, in his last words to his disciples, told them to go and make disciples of all people and to teach them what he has taught his disciples. Throughout the generations, the torch has been passed down from one generation to the next. It is now our turn to take up the torch and to fulfill the Great Commission. Let us all be busy telling everybody whom we come in contact with of the need to prepare the way of the Lord and to make straight his path. We live in a culture that is trying to find peace. We know the way of peace. It comes through accepting our Savior, the child who was born in the manger that first Christmas night in Bethlehem. Without Christ, there will be no peace. We who know how to have the peace that the society is searching for need to share that information with all whom we come in contact with. Let us be the messenger of peace that we are called to be. Let us cry out into the dark wilderness of this world that our world needs to prepare the way of the Lord and in so doing experience the peace that we are all looking for.